morning to you. Good morning. Let me say that again. Good morning to you. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So whether you are here in the sanctuary with us or if you're online, we invite you to worship the Lord with us here today. We always want to be in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we invite him in to dwell among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you know the words, sing along with us. We just say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on in and take a seat and inhabit our praise. Because that is why we are here. Amen. To praise the Lord. but you decided to be here today. Thank you all for joining us in service and for those of you who are watching from wherever you are around the world. We will now have our opening prayer. Will you all please bow your heads wherever you are. Lord God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the grace that you had given us to even to get us here today, Lord God. We are here today. There's more than whether it is two or three are here. We know you are here with us, Lord God. We thank you for that. We worship you today. Please bring down your Holy Spirit today as we have gathered here to praise your mighty name today, tomorrow, and forever. Lord God, we just want to lift up all of those who are not here and wanted to be here, Lord God, please keep them covered all every day in their, and every hour in their lives, Lord God. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on in, take a seat and have it. I praise God of Zion. Judas Lion, we acknowledge your presence, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I know that I serve a living God. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I believe that you do too. And I think about all the things that he's done for me. You know, I was thinking about this week, just this week, Monday and Tuesday, and then he's the same guy with me on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then again on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And so when I 
was he allowed me to open my eyes this morning. Amen. I couldn't Amen. wait to get here Amen. to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I could not wait to get here to yeah. praise the Lord. And I, and I often might say to you, I had an aunt, every time we saw her, she said, have you thanked God today? <laughs> Have you thanked God today? Hallelujah. So we just want to thank God for everything that he's done and everything that he's going to do. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
as we continue our worship experience, like I said, we are just here to worship and glorify God and give him the highest praise Amen. that we are that we can give him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. If anybody has some high praise in here for the Lord today, can I ask you to just join us in lifting up the name of the Lord. If you feel like standing on your feet, that's all right. If you feel like waving a hand, that's all right. We're not up here for a show. We are up here to worship the Lord, and it's all inclusive. It's all inclusive. We can all say hallelujah. We can all say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Because as we look back over our lives, you can see how far the Lord has brought you. You can see all the troubles that he's brought you through. But not only that, you can see how he has blessed you over and over and over and over and over and over and over. We don't deserve it. We don't have to ask for it, but because of his grace and his mercy, we are here today. Hallelujah. Amen. As I look back over my life, all that was wrong, Jesus made it all right. He deserves the highest praise, the highest praise. Oh, as I look back over my life, all that was wrong, Jesus made it all right. He deserves the highest praise, oh, the highest praise, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As I look back over my life, all that was wrong, Jesus made it all right. He deserves, he deserves the, the highest praise. Oh, yeah, the highest praise. Oh, yeah. as I look. All that was wrong, Jesus made it all right. He deserves the highest praise. Oh, yeah. The highest praise. Praise the highest praise. Amen. 
praise you. Lord, we praise you. We adore you. We adore no you. One before no you. one before you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. We adore you. We adore you. No one before no you. No one before you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we adore you. We adore you. No one before you. No one before you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. We adore you. We adore you. of you know how different your life has been since you found the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. We should get some shouts for that. Yes, Lord. Because we know where we've been and we know how we used to be. <laughs> Come on now. Then once we found the Lord, we know we've been changed. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. I would never go back. I would never go back. change a change has come over me
Hallelujah. It's all right to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. It's all right to give thanks for the change. Amen. Praise God this morning for all of you, those who are online with us. We give thanks to God Almighty, the Lord of our lives. Amen. We give thanks this morning for another Sunday, another day in his sanctuary. Amen. Another day to praise him. Another day to say, I made it through. Amen. I don't know, but some of us, we have difficult weeks. We have difficult days. And, and today we can give thanks. We can give thanks every day. But today, 
especially today, amen. Today we get to show each other why we give thanks, amen. This is the family, and the family, they say, who prays together, family, stay together, amen. And we want to stay together, amen. Al Green said, let's stay together, amen. And we need to do that. We need to stay together. Amen. We are a mighty fortress when we are together and on one accord. Amen. We're like-minded today. We're like-minded because how many of you know and believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Just give a shout out. Give a, if you believe in Jesus, amen. I mean, don't, don't, if you believe in Jesus, amen. I mean, you really got to just show Jesus, I believe in you. You know, I was watching the game yesterday, amen, and it, and it just, I know it upset some folk, amen, and I know some folk was just disappointed, and, but even when it got to the eighth, or seventh and the eighth, any guess what it was one more we were still praising hoping for a win amen we were still praising and 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 wishing and hoping for a win and i don't want you to stop right there i want you to continue to keep hoping and keep praising amen for a win for a win amen for a win we're all winners today amen you ought to just look at somebody and tell them, I'm a winner. I'm a winner today. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Amen. I am a winner for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I, we are winners today. Amen. I'm going to ask that you go to the throne of God's mercy with me as we begin this sermon series on the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, holy power. Lord, not only I, but we need you now. We need you, God, and we pray that your spirit fall from heaven. And under the sound of my voice and the voices of these, your people, Reconcile, oh God. Help us to see the ministry of reconciliation. Holy Spirit, holy power, let the words, my mouth, meditation of my soul, be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name pray in the church say amen. amen the ministry of reconciliation I'm going to ask that you would turn Bibles iPads cell phones silence your cell phone silence your iPad but turn to 2nd Corinthians 5 chapter 5 beginning with verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 beginning with verse 16. And I want you to just put a finger there and look up. People, people crave anything that's new. New phones, They'll stand in line and wait for the next iPhone, camp out, 
You know I'm right. You seen them on television and umbrellas, blankets to get the next iPhone. People crave anything that's new. New phones, new cars, clothes, hairstyles. But how new can you get? How new can you get? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, therefore, if anyone, Paul starts off saying, therefore, and let me pause there for a moment because this is very important. When you have a therefore in the sentence, we need to go back and see what is it there for. So we need to go to 16. And so Paul starts off in 16, verse 16, so from now on, So from now on, if I can just add to it, from this day forward, not starting tomorrow or this evening, right now, right now, from now on, then we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Even if we have known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we no longer know him this way. Verse 17, therefore, now we know why therefore was there for. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and especially to the doing of his holy word. Amen? Amen. I, I, I want to I talk to you from a notion. Don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be afraid to try something new. And in this text, according to Harper Collins' commentary, in the text, Paul is confronted because he does not have the appearance, skills, or the social status and that he cannot claim the achievements of religious experience of a true apostle. That's the tension in the text. That's the, that's the tension. That's the pull in the text. And his critics, they, they, they're judging him from a human point of view with a reference to worldly standards. They, 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 they are sizing him up. They're standing him next to the world and say, this is how you act. This is how you perform. This is you. And Paul quickly rejects these standards that are thrown at him about his past. Reminding his readers that he and the believers no longer regard Christ 
as the world does. What are you saying, Pastor? He's no longer regarding Christ as a Jewish carpenter. That's it. He's looking at Jesus different now, like many of us. When he saved you, when he stepped in, we look at Jesus different now. When, when it was nobody but Jesus who, who stepped into my life, my, my raggedy, tore up life, from, tore from the floor, it was Jesus. I have to look at Jesus differently now. He's more than, than what I thought. He's more, he's more than a conqueror. I have to look at Jesus different eyes now. And he's reminding. And Paul is saying, because those who are in Christ participate in a whole, in a whole new creation. Not just a part of a, the creation, but everything that God has given Jesus to give to us, we now are heirs of the kingdom and we participate in the dying and the resurrection. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Being in a new creation means that Jesus began a new act of creation in our lives. It's something, it's new, it's new. It's there. For us. In Ezekiel 36, 28, God told Ezekiel that I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. And I will remove from you your heart of stone and, and give you a, a heart of flesh. So, what does that mean? To have a change of heart. What does that really mean? To have a change of heart. It means I don't feel the way I used to feel about you anymore. It means that I'm going to let go and I'm going to forgive and trust God. What does it mean to, to have a, 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 a heart? It means that my, that uh, uh, enemies become friends. I don't hold a, a grudge against you any longer. I'm not trying to figure out who was right and who was wrong. I'm talking about the ministry of reconciliation. I'm talking about doing something new. It means you've been transformed by the renewing of your mind. And transformation is simply a change of heart. And God, church, God wants uh, to conform us, to transform us. Bible reminds of, of, us, of uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 18, God sends him to the potter's house so he could see how the potter shaped the clay. And the potter's there working the wheel and the hand, and he's shaping the clay. He's, he's forming, he's conforming something. He's shaping clay. But something happened to the clay while it was in the potter's hand. Amen. It became marred. It, it became messed up. And, but the potter reshaped the clay that became marred into something new. Well, when we are in Christ, that's what God is doing with us. God reshapes, conforms, transforms us to be like Jesus. To have the eyes of Jesus, to, to have the heart of Jesus, not just to talk Jesus, but walk Jesus, to love like Jesus, to care like Jesus, to be like Jesus, y'all. 
Remember when we were kids and, 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 and we played with Play-Doh? And when you first pull it out of its container, it's hard. It's, it's hard. It's, it's Play-Doh. And, and, and so you, you, have to, you have to keep working it. You have to keep working it. I'm going somewhere. Somebody's going to get this. You got you to gotta work it. You got to work it before we could shape it into what we were building. But after working it over and over, it became the, the, uh, the, the texture, the right texture that we wanted it to be. And, and, and then we were ready to, to shape and, and conform and make it into what we wanted it to be. Like the potter working the pot, his hands became dirty and, and messy. And sometimes we get dirty. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sometimes we get dirty and we get messy. Uh, 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 our lives gets us dirty. Everyday living gets us dirty. But God doesn't mind putting his hands into our mess. And then our mess becomes miracles. Amen. Uh, God doesn't mind putting his hands into our mistakes. Amen. And our mistakes become a message. Amen. Because God is, is working. God is like that potter with the clay. God is, is forming us, shaping us into something new. Every day of our lives, God is working and shaping and molding. God is working with us through our life experiences, whether you know it or not. And God is after something. He's after something, and each person in this place, under the sound of my voice, God is after something. God is conforming us, transforming us to be like Jesus, having the heart of Jesus in every situation. You all remember when the slogan came out, what would Jesus do? In every situation, being a new creation means you're you're not reformed or rehabilitated. You are recreated. You become a brand new person within Christ, having a brand new life. But you can't be afraid to do something new. Just like when a caterpillar experienced a metamorphosis, they, they, in this process, they, they, they spin a cocoon around uh, themselves. That's protection, amen. Wish I had some time to work that. I would really work that. Uh, they, 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 they spin this cocoon around them. This is a, a protection for them while they, are, while they are going through the metamorphosis of change. A change is going on. When the transformation is over, they come out as a total new creation. They come out as a, a, a beautiful butterfly, new life, new purpose. The caterpillar is not afraid to go through the transformation, leaving the old nature behind. They know in order to continue life, they must change. I'm telling you, church, today, this is a little segue. In order to continue to be on this corner, we're going to have to change. In order to continue to have life, we're going to have to change. In order to continue to reach God's people, we're going to have to change. The caterpillar knows that they must try something new. This is new to them. They knew life as a caterpillar, and they did it very well. But now they are willing to do something new, learn life as a butterfly. Are y'all hearing me? Learning life as a butterfly. We must learn life in a different world. Post-COVID, pre-COVID, everything has changed our world. 
It's changed our way of uh, communicating with people. It has changed our way of how we sit and worship. It has changed our way how we do worship right now. We must be willing to change, amen, if we're going to live. If we're going to live. The caterpillar knew that life would be different. But they were willing to learn life as a butterfly. That means their crawling days were over, somebody. Their crawling days were over. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you're in Christ, your crawling days are over. If you are in Christ, you're not inching through life. It's over. And Paul said, if you are in Christ, the old is gone. What are you talking about? Let me just stretch this for a minute. I got a few minutes. The old is gone. The attitude is gone. I ain't got to have it my way. It's gone. I can listen to you. It's gone. You can be wrong, but you're still right. Amen. I don't have to be on top all the time. I don't have to be right all the time. Amen. Your old attitude is gone, somebody. You see, people saw Paul as he was, as, as he was, not as he is. But Paul isn't by himself. You remember Paul uh, was Saul first, and then he became Paul. And that's what they're referring to. He was Saul first. He was a Christian killer, amen. And they were judging him on his past life, not on his present life. Do you all know anybody that judges you on your past life and not on your present life? Do you know anybody that's still talking about you the way you were? You ought to agree with them. You're right. That's the way I was, but look at me now. You were willing to do something new. You were willing to do something new. But Paul isn't by himself. Sometimes people see you as you were, not as you are. And if you are in Christ, God can take the good, the bad, and the ugly and create a masterpiece. Come on, somebody. God can take our flawed life and make it into something useful and meaningful. Uh, he can give us a purpose for living. So we shouldn't be afraid to try something new because if anyone is in Christ, the old game is gone and the new has come. When Jesus died on the cross, he took all of our hang-ups, our sins, to the cross and he bled and he died. He bled and he died. And if you are in Christ, then you die too on the cross. That means our insecurities die. That means means our vanities die. That means all of our jealousies die. Timidity die. Our vengeance die. When you are in Christ, you love like Jesus. When you are in Christ, you forgive like Jesus. When you are in Christ, you turn the cheek like Jesus. You are a new creation. I look at my hands and they look new. And I look at my feet and they do too. Well, in Matthew 11, 59 Jesus says come to me now I'm going to jump down but he says come to me remember that I am gentle and humble in heart uh, humble is the root word to humility humility means being open and willing to be worked on have I got any open people this morning have I got any open people this morning Jesus is sending out invitations he says come to me but you need to be humble he says come to me because Jesus is humble you need to be willing because Jesus is willing Jesus is willing to turn it around Jesus is willing to help you to do something new you need to be ready to try to do something new you know I know that you all are looking at my friend Gumby. I haven't lost my mind. <laughs> I play with Gumby here. Every now and then I play with Gumby. I play with Gumby. Because when I pick Gumby up, Gumby is, is just an extraordinary character. Amen. And I begin to just get interested in Gumby. Well, listen what Gumby, Gumby is all about. Uh, Gumby, the qualities just blow my mind. He is flexible, helpful, optimistic. All is possible, honest, pure. 
adventurous, fearless, loving, and everybody's friend. Amen. Gumby represents the good in all of us. Somebody ought to give it up for Gumby. You ought to just give it up for Gumby. We're talking about the ministry of reconciliation. We're talking about being like Gumby. Denise, we're talking about being flexible. If somebody wants to sing a solo, Denise says, by all means, sing the solo. Ain't nobody pouting up in here because they didn't get a chance to sing a solo. Ain't nobody going home to say, I ain't singing because they didn't get a chance to sing a solo. Amen, somebody. Amen again, church. We're going to be like Gumby. We're going to be flexible. Next week, you're going to see Gumby in a different position. Amen. Because Gumby is flexible. We need to learn how to be flexible. But let me say this. How many times have you sat in that same place where you are sitting, right? Okay. Let me move on. Let me move on. <laughs> Amen. We need, to, we need to test it out. Can we test it out? Amen. Can we just test it out? Amen. Next week, we ought to find a new place to sit. The view is beautiful. For those who are over here, you ought to try over here. Because the folk over here say it is just lovely. And the folk over here ought to try sitting over there. Because the view from over there is lovely. Folk in the middle ought to try to come it up. And every now and then you get to look behind you and look back and see where you, Okay. We praise God this morning for the ministry of reconciliation. Christ is in you. And when Christ is in you, that means God is ready to do something new. God is ready to do something new. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. We want to thank all of you today. We want to thank all of you today for being brave and coming out. We want to thank all of you for being brave and coming out and, and being flexible, even in the weather that we have experienced. Amen. We still give God thanks. Amen. We still give God thanks. Hallelujah. I want to say the doors of the church are open. That means we're just given a Christian invitation to become disciples for Jesus Christ. Doors of the church are open for those who are online. You may be needing, needing a place to plant your seed. This is the place right here. Amen. This is the place. I don't think we have any first-time guests. Do we have any first-time guests here today? I don't see any first-time guests. I see all family. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God for family. But listen, we want to we wanna invite our guests. Jesus is sending out invitations. In Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, he tells us that. And so an invitation is going out to you right now. And it says, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. And that's what you need to tell somebody. Go to Jesus with it. You're tired of your old lifestyle? Go to Jesus with it. You want to see something new in your life? Go to Jesus. You want to turn life around? Amen. You're tired of being down? You want to be up? Go to Jesus. Just tell somebody, go to Jesus. And Jesus will make it happen. Amen. How many of you believe that, that Jesus will make it happen? Jesus will make it happen. No problem is too big. No problem is too small or insignificant. Jesus handles them all, amen, because we are all his children, and we're all being transformed, being conformed to Jesus. We give God thanks. I want to introduce to you all our newest member. I think this is Jamaica. Jamaica, are you here? Stand up, Jamaica, and your daughter. Stand up. Amen. This is your family, Jamaica. This is your church family. Amen. Amen. Quincy is another person that's just been joined. He just joined not too long ago. Stand up, Quincy. Stand up, Quincy. Amen. This is your family, Quincy. I don't want folk just thinking I'm taking pictures from anybody and putting them on Facebook. <laughs> no. 
It's real, you all. It's real. We praise God for both of you. Amen. It ain't no such thing as hang in there. Ain't no hang in there. Ain't no hang in there. Hanging means you might let go. You're just holding, you're just barely gripping it. We, we say hold on to an unchanging hand. Amen. To an unchanging hand. This is your church family. We're going to love you. We're going to treat you right. We're going to educate you. We're going to walk with you through your walk. Amen. We're going to do all of that for you. Amen. We're going to do all of that and much more. We give thanks to God today for what God is doing in this place. God isn't finished with us. Oh, no, no, no. God isn't finished. We're just waiting for the second time around. The second time around. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give thanks to God. Amen. Listen, we have a few announcements, a few announcements, uh, just, just to wet your whistle, to make you aware of what's going on. I'm going to ask Robin Browning to come and lead us in this informational poem, moment. Good morning again. Are y'all, have y'all been renewed by that? I hope so. I, I'm, hold on, I'm still on a little bit of a high, so just hold on for a sec. First things we, we will have are ways to give if you would like to give online, you can go to our website. That's unionmemorialstl.org. Please hit the giving button in the upper right corner and follow the prompts until you see your gift has been received. Also, just on an announcement front, please go to the website to look for our announcements there and all of our events. And just to browse the website, when you see somebody new, Give them the website because that I recently gave that to uh, someone and he was shocked. First thing he told me, he's like, 1846? And I was like, yeah, we like one of the oldest churches um, west of the Mississippi. You mean, so this was during slavery? I'm like, yeah, so this was formed by Slave, in, former slave, enslaved folks? I'm like, yeah. So, you know, you never know. He's like, I need to come. I was like, yes, you do. <laughs> he's not here today. Oh, maybe he's online, but it is the invitation has been put out there. He was very impressed. So we thank uh, Stan Smith for heading that up with our, um, with our website on that. So, Please, again, just go to the website and get all your information there. You can also give on your way out for those who are here. Please put your offering and tithes in the basket. And if you are also still watching online, you can also mail in your um, offering that way. We will now have our prayer for our offering. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, whether we have little or whether we have much, Help us to always live open-handed in this tight-fisted world and find our greatest joy in following and serving you. Use our tithes and offerings and all that we have for the building up of your kingdom here on earth. This we ask in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Our other announcements, April birthdays, happy birthday to you all. Anybody in here? With a, I said April, August. Sorry, guys. Oh, goodness. I wish I could turn back time a little bit. I can't believe we are almost towards the end of the year. August birthdays. Okay. Yes. All right. Happy birthday. So glad you made it. <laughs> Have a blessed year. Enjoy your days. Also, August 27th. It's very important on our church calendar. All ministry team leaders need to be in attendance August 27th at 11 a.m., especially for team leaders from our scholarship, family and friends, 
uh, children, youth, young adults, membership committee, our greeters, all of you all, stewardship. If you know if you have been in a min ministry. Yes, we've been on a, somewhat of a pause. So you know you were leading a ministry here. You had an event every year. You need to be here. August 27th, 11 a.m. It is going to be a great workshop. Yes, we are known we're going to eat. Okay, so don't, be, don't worry about that. And uh, we, we are, this is, this is going to, this is going to be good. And as the pastor said, new. So let's, let's push forward. It's going to, we're going to have our new calendar um, set up and everything after this workshop for the 2023 year. So we can start making disciples for Christ. All right. Other than that, please continue to, um, call into the prayer line to come to our Wednesday night Bible study to join us on Sundays for Sunday school at 1 p.m. Our Bible study on Wednesday is from 6.30 to 7.30. We're doing that with Green Trails as well. So please go ahead and do one of those things. And at some point, you can do that. And our prayer lines are on Tuesday and Friday, Tuesday at 8 a.m., Friday at 7 a.m. Again, this information is in our emails and also on our website. We also have one more announcement. Our United Methodist Women in Faith, United Women in Faith, oh, it's hard. That newness. <laughs> <laughs> the United Women in Faith Awareness Day is coming up in, on September 11th. Right after church, we have Martha Cooper, uh, Laura Stewart. The, if you would like to um, have your name, not well, you can not have your name, but if you want to um, give someone in honor or memory of a loved one or a special person in your life, who you admire and who has encouraged you, a woman who has done that, you can place that name in the ad for $5. They will be out there collecting names and filling out your form, which is this. Many of you have seen this before. So after church, please do that. Um, again, it's all the way up till September 4th for you to do that. And with that, we have no more announcements. I do just want to do a sh quick thing, Pastor. Um, with school coming up, the teachers and the students, be safe. We are praying for you. Amen. May God put you in grace and wisdom. Of course, you, we know the teachers, you are teaching them the best that you can, students, that you are learning everything. Yes, you are learning X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared, but you need that wisdom from God to discern what is good and right. So we hope you all are covered. I pray that it is a good year and he will cover you from all hurt, harm, and danger. I can't believe I have to say that for you going to, uh, to, going to school for now on, but we be safe. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Uh, yeah, would you stand to your feet now, please? We are going to dismiss all hearts and minds or alike. We give praise to God who is above every situation. We thank God for allowing us to not being afraid to do something new, doing something new. We give thanks for that. I have an, um, a flyer in my hand about the United Methodist uh, Family Day at Bush Stadium Saturday, September 17, 2022. And um, I'm going to give this flyer to um, First, I want, Diane, I want you to have a copy of this. 
and then I'm going to give this to Alexis um, to put on our board out there, our information board out here to my right in our south exit. And I want, uh, if you all are interested in going, you need to call Dr. Linda Settles. She has ordered 50 tickets, 50 tickets, first come, first serve. And uh, we will be going along with uh, Grace, I mean, Green Trails, United Methodist Church. So, Diane, I'm going to give a copy of this to you, okay? And we need to be communicating with Diane. If you want to go, we'll work out the details, arrangements, or how we're going to meet, whatever, so you'll get your ticket. But please let us know. Please let us know. And again, we'll do that through email, and we will do that, uh, lift this up. Uh, next week as well. Okay? Praise God. We want the praise team to take us out. Amen. We want to leave. We come in singing and we want to leave out singing. That's an old African worship style. Come on, clap your hands. Almighty God, yes, we do praise you. We magnify you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts in the souls of our mind. We give thanks to you now, God, who sits high and looks low. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to do something new, oh God. We thank you, God, for creating us to be kingdom builders. Now, by the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion with the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in us now and forever. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Say, Amen. 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 Amen.